Hello YouTube! Today in the Nighty Librarian I'm going over my December TBR list. As you can tell by my background, I am getting into the holiday spirit. I've got my uh, my lights, my garlands, I'm living my best life. Also, I don't know if these show up very well on camera, but my lights are all M&Ms. You know like from the 90s when the M&Ms, they were like little people? I bought Christmas lights that are M&M like little people and I found them from the 90s and I'm obsessed. <laughs> Anyway, in the meantime, I've got a pretty good TBR list for December. I wanted to get some holiday stuff. I wanted to get some other like fun ideas in before the end of the year officially. So uh, yeah, let's just go over what I have on deck officially for December. Let's start things off with the books of the month for the Blazing Bodice Rippers Book Club. And I have Witchmark by C.L. Polk and I have A Marvelous Light by Freya Marski. What's that? Two books? Yeah, we're doing a double feature. It's going to be a Christmas miracle. <laughs> the live show for this is going to be on December 26th, so Boxing Day, day after Christmas, over on Bethany's channel, that's Beautifully Bookish Bethany, at, again, same time, 11 a.m. Pacific time, except this time, you know, we're going to be on a Sunday rather than a Saturday. Both of these are Edwardian era queer romances, so all of us are pretty excited to read both of these. <laughs> So I do believe this is an MM romance and we're mainly following Miles, our protagonist. And in this world, it's not exactly the real world, but it's a new world, but based on Edwardian, like England, um, there's a world war a Bruin. And we're following, like I said, Miles, who is a young man who is part of like, what, like a magical family. They have all these like noble families and they have like magic. And he wants to escape his fate, so he goes to war because that's a better idea. And he comes back from war, you know, obviously quite changed. So it's that's all I really know about it. I know it's like magic and magical wars, and it's supposed to be an MM romance, but like that's literally all I know about this. The, like the blurb on the back is not that descriptive, but I am excited to read it. It's Edwardian England and romance and magic. Like I love the whole concept here. So I'm super excited to get into it. Again, an Edwardian era MM romance. And this one is kind of like, um, like a murder mystery and kind of like, you know, like the Ministry of Magic, so to speak, is kind of like the setting here. So you have Robin and Edwin. Robin, he is like a nobleman of regular England, no magic. And then like a clerical error happens. He ends up getting assigned as like, um, like I don't know, uh, what is it? Like a, like, a, like a diplomat kind of to this magical society he never Never knew existed so now he shows up and he's like okay wait there's magic oh my goodness and the guy who had my job before me has mysteriously disappeared fantastic and so <laughs> this kind of gets puts him into um, like a partnership with Edwin who is like his counterpart at the the magical like government thing and uh, they have to work together to solve this murder mystery and we really just decided to read this one at the last moment since we have this one as well so we kind of want to compare and contrast and it's gonna be a really good show I'm really excited to read this with everybody it's going to be again December 26 11 a.m. Pacific time over on beautifully bookish Bethany's channel excited to see everybody there for a double feature Christmas miracle <laughs> For my next episode of Drunk Classics, I am going to be reading Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. And I have not read Little Women. And yes, I do know there are sad things in here, but I do want to read it still. <laughs> As of this time when I am filming this video, I have not 100% decided what day the episode will go live on. So I will let you guys know soon enough what day I pick. But right now it's still like a little up in the air, but it's going to be toward the end of the month. So Little Women, I mean, it's kind of part of the cultural zeitgeist. And honestly, I don't even think I've seen a movie adaptation. Like I'm really bad when it comes to Little Women. Like I know what it's about kind of because just it's part of the culture we live in. But you know, it's about this, these, this group of sisters and they're all like coming of age and like experiencing womanhood at this period of history. So it's a very different time period and they're all like growing and changing and living their lives and they all have different kind of trajectories and that's the idea here but it also just feels like super Christmassy like is it just me but like it feels like Christmassy <laughs> so I feel like this is the perfect like December drunk classics pick and um, who knows I know there are sad things in here I feel like I'm going to get emotional <laughs> we'll find out I don't know but yeah towards the end of the month this will go live I'm excited to read it for drunk classics if you want to join in I always premiere these to live chat during it so come hang out 
Speaking of Christmas, I got a couple of definitely super Christmassy books on this TBR list. So first things first, I have The Lights on Knockbridge Lane by Roan Parrish. This is a MM Christmas romance and like, you guys, surprisingly smutty. <laughs> like look at it, it looks so like wholesome. Like one of those small town Christmas romances that are like kind of clean, but like, no, no. They're smutty bits. So, you know, pretty indicative of these type of books. There is a single dad, his name is Adam. He moves kind of back to his small town, I guess he grew up in, and he wants just to give his daughter the best life possible. So, you know, he hires the reclusive, grumpy, new neighbor, Wes, to help him, I guess, put a bunch of Christmas lights on the house. They want this house to have all of the Christmas lights possible. And, you know, since he's over there every day, like, doing work and stuff, they kind of get to know each other, and, like, sparks fly, and also Christmas twinkle lights, and all of that jazz. So, <laughs> I am excited for this one. I don't see a lot of, like, you know, queer holiday romances, but I'm excited that this exists, and... It's got smutty bits, so I'm excited for this one. Another Christmas pick for me is The Trouble with Christmas by Amy Adams. Again, totally like not my usual jam for a book because it looks like small town kind of country western stories, which usually end up being clean, but like I also feel like there's smutty bits in this, so I'm excited for that. So this is Susie and Joshua, and Susie, she just wants to have the most Christmassy Christmas ever. So she rents like this little cottage on a ranch, and she's like, yes, I'm living my fantasy. And then her like rich, like artsy parents are like, you need to come home for Christmas. And she's like, uh -uh, I can't, I am with my boyfriend. I'm with my boyfriend on his ranch. I, we, I live here on his ranch and I can't leave him for Christmas. And the parents are just like, oh, okay, we'll come to you. Oh shit. The, the sexy landlord guy, Joshua, doesn't know that he's now Susie's boyfriend. <laughs> so, you know, a good fake dating trope ensues. And also Joshua's grumpy, he doesn't like Christmas, but like there's a lot of mistletoe around and he's kissing Susie and that part's like really cool. So like, of course, it's gonna just be silly and like full of like Christmas stuff. And like that's kind of the vibe I was going for. I just want something silly and Christmassy and potentially smutty. Like that was like my wish list for Christmas smutty delights. <laughs> so hopefully this book is gonna like live up to all of my criteria, but yeah, I'm excited. It's gonna be a Christmassy smutty romp. Last smutty romp I have on the list here is Well Matched by Jen DeLuca. And I have been really, really enjoying this series. Like it's a series I didn't think I was gonna like, but now I'm like obsessed with. And they're all based at like a Renaissance fair. And I have been waiting for this matchup for like a, a while at this point. So this is April and Mitch. April, she's a little older, she's a single mom. And Mitch, he's kind of like life of the party guy, looks amazing in a kilt works at the Renaissance Fair every summer, also teaches gym, like, you know, he's a little bit of a himbo, like, let's be real. And they're, like, friends, and then, like, things start happening where, like, now they have to, like, fake date a little bit, and I do love a good fake dating, and, like, things progress from there. It is also gonna be, you know, like, nerdy stuff, because it's a Renaissance Fair, friends to lovers, fake dating situation. It's got a lot of tropes that I'm obsessed with. And I've been waiting for this team up so hard. Will this team up, this pair up? I don't know, this relationship? <laughs> like so long, it's so good. You have kind of like grumpy, serious April and like, you know, he's basically a golden retriever in a kilt, like Mitch. And they're like, they're gonna get together and I'm very excited for that prospect. <laughs> Moving on to books that really have, you know, nothing to do with Christmas or romance. <laughs> I have Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. I am really into this. Like, I think it's going to be amazing. Like, I keep hearing great things about it. I also heard that it's a retelling of this fairy tale, The Goose Girl. However, I have never read or really heard of that fairy tale, so I would not have known unless, you know, someone in my comments told me that. But yes, I am super excited for this one. So we're following Vanya. She's a bit morally gray. She is um, the adopted daughter of both fortune and death. So, you know, she has some, some strange family issues. 
and she's also, you know, moonlights as a jewel thief. And while she's working as like the princess's like handmaiden or something, she she pulls a switcheroo and now she has this like magic necklace that makes everyone think she's the princess, the real princess, left penniless, la la la. I think she's very much not the best human, but uh, eventually she gets into like the wrong situation. She steals from the wrong people, gets herself cursed, and she has to like figure out a way to con her way out of this curse or things are gonna go poorly. <laughs> So yeah, I, I'm in. I think it's gonna be a really interesting character, definitely morally gray, kind of a bad guy, but I'm hoping for like anti-hero bad guy. So I, I'm living for it. I think this is gonna be so fun. I am also going to be reading The Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker. And this one sounds so cool. Okay, so we're following Ren. She's half British, half Japanese. And she's also a reaper when she's living in Britain for all these centuries. And I, and I think like a, a grim reaper, she harvests souls. And she's also a Japanese Shinigami. And I'm not 100% sure the mythos of Shinigami, but she has like these powers that are developing. And she's like, I gotta get the heck out of England. So she goes to Japan. And she's like, okay, I'm gonna pledge myself to the goddess of death. Like this is my new path in life, I'm working it out. And she has to do a bunch of tasks to like prove herself worthy. And she she has to kill these three yokai demons and like killing demons not easy so she has to team up with like her brother and then like a mysterious new ally and I love it like culturally I think it's gonna be really really cool is a story I haven't read before and I yeah I'm just into it I'm so into it yes and like the back cover has all these like little like like blurbs and it's like I am too dangerous to let live any longer it is written in the book of Enkau decreed by the high reaper himself Death will come to find me, but I will no longer be there. Dun dun dun. So, so dramatic. I love it. I'm living for the drama. I'm really, really excited for this one. Fingers crossed it like lives up to the hype I'm putting on it, but it sounds super good. Hopefully this isn't just like a shiny mess on the camera, but I'm trying my best to make it not be a shiny mess. So this is The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed. And I keep hearing great things about this. I love this cover. I went and got it from the library and I was like, you know what? I'm doing it. Let's go. Like, I feel like woodsy stuff is perfect for December. It make, feels Christmassy, even though this probably has nothing to do with Christmas. But like, just in the little blurb here, it says, um, inspired by Hungarian history and Jewish mythology, follows a young pagan woman with hidden powers and a one-eyed captain of the woodsmen as they form an unlikely alliance to thwart a tyrant. All of that sounds great and I'm obsessed. <laughs> We're following Evika and Gaspar. And Evika, she's a young girl in this village. She has no magic. Her villagers are like, ew, you have no magic. There's something wrong with you. And then the woodsmen, the guards, they come and they're like, hey, we need like a girl to sacrifice for the king because the king is evil. And so they're like, hey, take Evika. We don't like her. And she's like, well, shit. And so they take her and then like get attacked and stuff. And the only survivor is Avika and the one-eyed captain. He has one eye. He's got an eye patch, I bet, and I'm obsessed. So his name is Gaspar. Turns out, uh-oh, he is like the secret prince. Like his mother was like a foreign queen that no one likes, but he's like a prince. And he's just like, my brother is a crazy bitch and he's trying to take over the throne and he's gonna murder everybody. We gotta stop him. And like Avika's like, you know what? I get that. So like, let's team up. <laughs> and then stuff happens from there. There's magic. There's um, tyrants and like overthrowing evil stuff. And I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm really, really into this. I'm fingers crossed it's gonna be good. Like I will be so disappointed if it's not, <laughs> but it sounds really fun. Last but not least on this Christmassy book haul, I have the least Christmassy book possible, which is Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. Oh boy, this is not gonna have any Christmas vibes. It's just gonna be terrifying and I'm okay with it. <laughs> This is book two of the Diviner series and book one was so intense, like terrifying, frankly. I was expecting, you know, a paranormal YA romp and I got like horror, so much horror, twisted violence and stuff. So like, it's a lot darker than I was expecting. And this one is this continuing on with that, except now I think they're moving into uh, like dream magic and like I don't know if it's gonna be like a Freddy Krueger vibe or not but like I really did enjoy the Diviners book one of this series so I do want to continue on I just don't think I can read a whole book every month I'm gonna have to space it out because I need like time to recover <laughs> after each one because they're just horrific and terrifying and I'm like obsessed a little bit but yes so I'm gonna read this one it is a chonker of a book I don't even know how long it is I didn't check oh my gosh how long are you 
Okay, so it's 613 pages. It's a chonker, but like I, I'm excited for it. Let's let's get some spooky delights just to close out 2021. Why not? <laughs> okay, so that is my final TBR list for 2021. I'm very excited about it. And you know, I got some Christmassy delights, I got some smutty delights, I got some fantasy stuff. So overall, like I feel like this is just a me month. Like I picked all books that like I'm super interested in and would want to like hang out with. So, so far so good. I'm feeling pretty hot damn excited about this list. Let me know in the comments down below, um, what kind of holiday books are you reading? Are you reading any holiday romances or just holiday books in general? And it doesn't just have to be Christmas. You could read um, Hanukkah related or Kwanzaa related. I haven't really found any of those romances, but I'm sure they exist. So yeah, what are you reading? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon.